Let us see about literary or poetic devices. Now these devices are used to beautify the poem, beautify the composition or give special effect or expression to the poem. So these poetic devices serves the most important role in the poetry. So we should understand them, identify them. So the literary devices or the poetic devices, they are also called figure of speech. They are used by the poets, the writers to provide ornamentation and special effect on their composition. So let us see about the literary devices or the poetic devices. First we have sin. You could have heard about this term sin. It is a poetic device that is used to make comparison between two things which are essentially dissimilar. So singly is used to make comparison, to draw comparison between two things which are essentially dissimilar. Now in singly, we make the use of words such as or like. That means the comparison in simile is an indirect comparison. It is not directly compared. So simile is a poetic device that is used to compare any two dissimilar things using words such as or like. See the example for better comprehension. Example, she fought like a lioness. See here, she fought like a lioness. See here, like we have used. So, whenever you come across such poetical lines in which the comparison is done using the words like or as, that will be the heart of sin. That means in this line, Simile is used to compare. Here she fought like a lioness. That means her bravery, her courage is compared to a lioness using the word like. See here, A is like B. A is like B. Comparison is done using the word like. Let's move on to our second poetic device, metaphor. Second poetic device, metaphor. Now, a comparison between two dissimilar things. That's also same. Simile is also used to make comparison between two dissimilar terms or things. In metaphor, the comparison is also between two dissimilar things, but the point that should be noted here, or the important thing that should be noticed here, is how the comparison is made. Here it is indirect comparison in simile, while in metaphor it is implied directly. The comparison is done directly. It is implied directly. Let's see one example for 
better understanding. She is a lioness in the battle. You see here the difference between this sentence and this sentence. Both meaning is same, almost same. But how the comparison is made, there is the difference. Here we have used like a direct comparison. Here we have directly compared her to a lioness. See here, she is a lioness. That means A is B. A is not like B. A is B. Here A is like B. Here A is B. Simply the comparison is made directly a better form. So the most important thing that we should be careful about is in simile we will use words such as or like. In simile indirect comparison is made. While in better form we compare the things directly. It is implied directly. Let's move on to our third point device personification. Personification. Now that means giving human qualities to an animal, object, or a thing or inanimate object. That means the attribute of human, the quality of human is given to something that is non living object or a thing or an animal. This is a technique, this is a study in which we give human qualities to such non living things or object. See here one example. The river murmured. Now the word murmured that means to you know speak very slowly. That means whispering. And this is something done by human being. It is associated with the human ability of speaking. So murmuring is closely associated with our ability of speaking. Have you ever seen a river murmuring or making sound like human being? No. But in the poem, the poet had given human ability to the river so that the river murmured. So this is the effect by which human qualities are transferred or instilled on the non-living object, inanimate object, animal or a thing. See here another example. Rays of sun danced through the trees. See, rays of sun danced through the trees. Have you ever seen like that? No, literally it is not possible. The sun rays do not dance. But here to show the movement of the sun rays that passes through the branches or the trees or the leaves is in a dancing form. Dancing is a quality of human beings. How then the rays of sun could dance? The attribute, the quality is given to the sun rays because it passes through the branches and the leaves of the trees. It seems to be dancing. Now this is how 
a poet using the personification gives the human qualities, attributes, or human abilities to an animal, object, or a thing. Let's move on to our fourth poetic device, illusion. It is a direct or indirect reference to a familiar figure, place, or event from history, literature, and mythology. Now, according to the definition, whenever we give the reference of a familiar figure, place, or event from the past, from the history, to emphasize the importance or the significance that we call illusion. Now, we can take event, figure, place from the history also, literature also, mythology also. So, the reference to those things, place, person or event will be defined as illusion. Example, this place is like a garden of Eden. This place is like a garden of Eden. You see here, garden of Eden, it really does not exist. But the description of Garden of Eden is found in one of the religious books. So the place is compared to a place that is found in a religious book. Let's see another example. Stop acting like Hitler. Now Hitler is or was a popular figure, an eminent personality. When we go through the history, we can see or we can have the knowledge of Hitler, who was he. So he stopped acting like Hitler. The comparison is made, the emphasis is made using a familiar figure from the history. Hitler is a familiar figure in the history. So, this thing that we are doing, the direct or indirect reference to a familiar figure, a place, or an event from the history, literature, or mythology is defined as illusion. Let's move on to the fifth poetic device that is alliteration. Now, alliteration that means the repetition of a consonant sound at the start of two or more consecutive words. You see here it is the repetition of consonant sound at the start of two or more consecutive words. See here the example for better comprehension. From the burning bottles of the earth. Now if you see here the two words burning bottles they are starting from the B sound that is a consonant sound. So this use of B or replication of B in a line or in a sentence that is called alliteration. We can see that the repetition of B sound in two words in this line. See one more example. His Horsemen hard behind us right. See here, the sound of H is repeated in this line. His horsemen hard 
behind us. So this is the reputation of a consonant sound. Therefore, this is the pointed device and trash. Let's see the other one. Six reputation. Reputation. It consists of same words repeated again and again. Reputation. The name is clear that in this pointed device, the same words will be repeated and repeated again to show the emphasis, to show the significance. See here, example, I did was smiling and smiling and smiling. Now this repetition of word smiling, it is called repetition. Again, we will see another example. And miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Here, the repetition is done. The phrase, okay, or the group of sentences is repeated. Phrase, repetition. It is the repetition of words in the first example. In the other or the second example, phrase repetition is done. And months to go before I sleep. And months to go before I sleep. Let's move on to the seventh pointed device. Imagine. Now imagine that means formation of mental picture of ideas, thoughts, actions that appeals to our physical sense. Now, we create a picture, mental picture of ideas, thoughts, events, actions that appeals to our physical sense organs. So, Example is here. It was dark and dim in the forest. Now see here the sentence. Dark and dim. That creates a mental picture of darkness. So it appeals to our visual sense. That means eyes. So we cannot see anything darkness and in dim. So it appeals our physical sense of our visualization or our seeing. See another example. The children were shouting and screaming. The word shouting and screaming that appeals to our auditory sense. That means the ability of hearing. So we are creating a mental picture of ideas, thought, action, or event. So that will appeal our physical sense. Now see the eight pointed device antithesis. Now that means any two ideas. Two ideas which are opposite to each other, which are contrary to each other, are put together. Now see the example. Man proposes, God disposes. Now this is the best example of antithesis. When man proposes, God disposes. The two ideas are here. Man proposes, this is the first idea. God disposes, this is the second idea. Both of them, they are contrary to the, each other. They are opposite to each other. But yet, they are put in a sentence together. See here, one more example. Speech is silver, but silence is gold. Now, speech and silver, both speech and silence, both are opposite to each other. But they are put together in a sentence which is similar, but silence is gold. 
See one more example. Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. So patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. So this is the way to combine two opposite ideas, put together two opposite ideas in a sentence. Let's move on to the next poetic device or the figure of speech that is symbol. Now that is used to empty objects with certain meaning. That is different from its original meaning. Now symbol, it is a figure of speech, it is a literary device that is used to empty or instill certain meaning to any object. But the most important thing to understand here that the meaning that is given to any object may differ from the actual meaning or the original meaning of that object. Let's see an example. A sunflower weary of time who countless the steps of the sun. You see here the natural elements are used here. First, sunflower and second is sun. These two elements of nature are used in this lines. But here in the poem, the poet has given a different meaning to the sun. It represents not the category of a particular flower here. It represents human beings. It is symbolical to human beings. Why? The sun is symbolical of life. It represents life. So, the writer, the composer, or the poet may give a different meaning to any object that would be different from the original meaning of that object. This is called symbol or symbols. Let's move on to the next poetic device or figure of speech. Paradox. Paradox, a statement in which there is an apparent contradiction but have basic underlying truth. Now in paradox, the statement will have contradiction but it will show you some latent truth underlying fact. Let's see example. I must be cruel to be kind. You see the contradiction between, in between the sentence. Once it is cruel to be kind. So both things are involved in cruelty and kindness are put together. Now this is something that is, you know, contradictory. So, I must be cruel to be kind. I know that I will love you. See here the contradiction in the sentence. I know that I will love you. And then, the child is a father of the man. The child is a father of a man. Now, how contradictory statement it is. You see here in all these three sentences, there are two contradictory terms, two opposite terms that does not connect to each other. But they show us the reality, they show us the fact or the truth. Let's see the next 
figure of speech that's position that's the position that means mixing of opposite or different ideas situations settings moves point of view to highlight the contrast see here that's the position that means mixing or combining the opposite sides opposite ideas situation settings moves and viewpoints in order to highlight the contrast see here better than better late than never that shows the contrast better to be late than never now see other when the cash away the mind will play See the contrast in the sentence. When the cats are away, or in the absence of cats, the mice will play. That's the contrast here. Let's move on to the next figure of speech or literary device. Ironic. Okay. Ironic. It is a contrast or incongruity between and expectation and reality. Now it shows the contrast or incongruity between an expectation and reality. That means the intended meaning is different from the actual meaning. Intended meaning will differ from the actual meaning. See here Example for better understanding and comprehension. The butter is as soft as a slab of marble. Now, how that's possible? The meaning is different from the actual meaning. The butter is as soft as a slab of marble. Next, see, the doctor is a kind hearted. As a rule, the doctor is as kind-hearted as a rule. Now this shows us the expectation and the reality. Reality is different. Expectation is different. See one more example. His hands are as soft as a rock. His hands are as soft as a rock. Now, this shows us the contrast between the expectation and the reality. Reality is different, expectation is different. And irony can be further classified. Situation, irony, verbal, irony, and many more. Let us move to the next figure of speech or objective device that is as monads. The repetition of vowel sound across a line of text or in the stressed syllable of words. You see here the repetition of vowel sound in a stressed syllable of words or in a line of text is defined as as monads. Let's see the example of as monads. Once upon a midnight, pretty while I toddled thick and weary. Now you see here in the words, stress words, weary, weak, weary. There are the use of e a, e a, e a that produces the vowel sound. So therefore. This use of words which produce vowel sound in a line of text or in the stress level of words is defined as assonance. Let's move on to the next figure of speech is oxymoron. Next figure of speech is oxymoron that includes two opposite ideas which are combined to create an effect or 
impact oxymoron that introduces two ideas which are dissimilar, which are opposite to each other. Now, important thing that to be noted here is that an adjective proceeded by a noun with a contrasting meaning. Always an adjective proceeded by a noun that will have a contrasting meaning. See here, criminal kindness. You can see the adjective that is followed by a noun. Living death. You can see the contrary or the thing that is contrasting, that is put together or combined together and adjective that is preceded by a noun that produces or that creates a contrasting meaning. Moreover, it creates an effect or impact. Let's move on to the next pointing device or figure of speech on the top here. A word phonetically mimics or resembles the sound of a thing it describes. Now, on the top here, that produces sounds. That means they are the words that phonetically produces sounds of a thing that it describes. See here, exactly, by the sound of machines or the machine noises that can be represented through the words honk, beak, clang. So these words that, you know, are produced by the machines or they shows or represents the sound of machines. Likewise, impact sound, crash, whack, and so this type of sounds that represents the impact. Then voice sound, it may be the voice of human or animal voice sound represented by his murmur, giggle, growl. So these are the, the representation of human sound. See, the sound of nature, how they are represented, splash, drip, rustle, buzz. So these are the sounds that represent the sounds of nature. They are called the onomatopoeia. Now we want to the next figure of speech or point of view ones, that is hyperbole. Hyperbole. It is an overstatement that exaggerates a particular condition to show emphasis, intensity, and effect. Now it is an overstatement of any particular condition to show the emphasis, intensity, or effect. See the example? I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Now, you know, the condition of hunger is so exaggerated and overstated using the term, I could eat a horse. Literally, it's not possible. But to overstate that condition of hunger, this statement is so made. Let's see another example. He is as heavy as an elephant. Now this is literally not true. A person cannot be equalized with the heaviness of an elephant. But here, to show the condition of heaviness or weight, he is compared to an elephant. The weight is compared to an elephant. That is the overstatement of this condition. Now see another example. The blacksmith's hands are harder than a rock. Now the condition of the blacksmith's hands are equalized with the condition of a rock. The hardness of the hands of 
is overstated here and compared here to that of a rock. So in hyperbole, the condition is such or so overstated or exaggerated to show the emphasis, intensity, or effect. 